Good morning, afternoon or evening, whenever or wherever in the world you are. I'm your white guy, back again to bring you another benchmarking video. Today we're going to be looking at the Division 2 from Ubisoft, the end of day shooter with an unhealthy fascination for forcing you to loot the corpses of your fallen enemies. We're going to take a look at 2560 by 1080 3440 by 1440 resolutions, and the DX11 versus DX12 showdown, which provided some extremely surprising results, to be honest. I'll also be running through the game's preset graphical options, alongside some optimised settings that give you close to graphical parity with the game's ultra preset, that give you as much as a 30% boost to frame rate. These settings come via hardware unboxed and the great work they do, so I'd advise that you definitely check out their video for an even more in-depth look at what the graphic options do and how much performance they cost. I'll leave a link to that video below, so please, please check it out. And remember to leave me a like and comment on what other current and upcoming releases that you'd like to see me benchmark. So now let's get into this and look at how much graphical grunt you're going to need to salute some filthy corpses in Ultra Wide. First off, my test system should be on screen. The Meeting 2 Veg, being a GTX 1080 Ti and the AMD Ryzen 1700X running at 4GHz with 16GB of 3000MHz DDR4 RAM. Looking at the settings, oh my lord, sweet Jesus, just insane. This game has more graphic options than Jerry, the owner of the local adult video store. You can adjust everything from the usual suspects such as shadow quality, ambient occlusion, right down to particle detail and lens fare. You can even choose to adjust just how bushy Jerry stash is. Okay, right, the last one's a lie. But the variety of settings available in this game is superb, and Ubisoft should really be commended for that. It's giving you a great deal of control over just how you want your game to run, and how you want it to look. Unlike other recent releases, yes, Metro Exodus, I am looking at you. When Capcom are putting out a better suite of graphic options on the games than you are, then it might well be time to reevaluate just what you've done with your life. Agent, if you can hear us on this frequency, anyway, keep we're going to be running through the game's low, bastards. medium, high and ultra presets as well as the optimised settings I mentioned earlier. Speaking of which, they are on screen now. Basically you want to be setting the game to ultra and dropping down a few key settings by one or two steps, retaining most of the delicious graphical sheen while giving you a nice boost to FPS. Now the results. Of course, brought to you in average FPS. I did in this video initially tend to bring you 1% and 0.1% lows as well, but no matter what I tried, MSI Afterburner was just not getting along with the Division 2. I don't really like to use fraps, which I could have done after some strange anomalous results in the past. I was getting noticeable frame rate drops just from having the program run in the background. Anything from 2 to 3 to as much as 10 FPS, so that's why I don't use it. Anyway, here are the numbers staring at you on the screen right now from your tiny pocket or giant shiny internet watchy box. You've got your 2560 by 1080 low 170 FPS, medium 148, high 124, ultra at 101, and optimized came in at 115 FPS. That's a 14% increase in performance for negligible graphical difference compared to ultra settings. Now, 3440 by 1440, low, you're coming in at 160 FPS, medium came in at 111, high at 89, ultra came in at 70, and optimized came in at 86 frames per second, that's a whopping 22% increase in the frame rate for graphical fidelity that's better than high, almost on par with ultra for high level performance, fantastic stuff. Now, some particularly interesting results. DX11 versus DX12. You've got the uh, 3440 by 1440 DX12 result coming in at 86 frames per second, while the DX11 one only came in at 75 frames a second. Very big difference. This trend continued with 2560 by 1080, DX12 coming in at 115 frames per second, with DX11 only coming in at 98. As I said earlier, I thought these results were really strange and maybe this has got to be something I've done wrong, maybe I've tweaked a setting that I haven't realised, maybe I've done something unknown, maybe I've left V-Sync on, it's causing an issue, double checked all that, nope, ran the tests again another three or four times, within one frame every time, results stay the same. So as you can see there, if you're running a Ryzen system, DX12 is definitely the way to go, DX11 as I've seen in other benchmark videos, Intel platforms seem to run 
much of the muchness on both. So if you're on Ryzen, definitely DX12. If you're on Windows 10, definitely advise DX12. If you're on DX11 and Windows 7 on a Ryzen platform, I would probably advise mm, you're fine because Windows 7 just got DX12 support. Forget what I was about to say. I was talking garbage. And with that said, conclusion time. I've really enjoyed my time with the Division 2, a real graphical showcase proving the benefits of running the Snowdrop engine on PC. It seems to be a really flexible tool which can provide some decent looking results at lower settings while maintaining outstanding frame rates. Conversely at higher settings the game really shines with beautiful environments and post processing effects while delivering some great performance. It really does show how good a PC game can and should be when the developers put the time in, but also reminds me of just how much of a hot mess the Assassin's Creed Anvil Next engine continues to be. Especially with Far Cry 5's Junior engine as well, also showcasing great PC performance. I don't know why they continue to use Anvil Next on Assassin's Creed. It really mystifies me at times. Back to this game. If there was one criticism of the game, it would be like a lot of recent Ubisoft titles. The character models are a bit, well, Ikea, shall we say? Halfway between a department store mannequin and a park bench. Very wooden and often making you feel slightly uncomfortable. But with that said, that's it for today, guys. Remember to leave me a like, comment on any games that you want to see me benchmark in the future, and above all else, live life with a little bit more swift and a little bit less squanch. Peace out.